What's up everyone? We're here for another workout at home. All only equipment that you'll need for today is a jump rope and you can use your backpack like we have in workouts before or if you have some weights, awesome, we'll use those today. We're gonna start off with our warm up, and again, you can move at your own pace. Make sure that you have water ready, a towel, and maybe a yoga mat if you need to rest on the floor a little bit. Cool? Now, without further ado, we're gonna kick off our warm up. We're gonna do a couple of movements. Follow along with me. The first one is gonna be called a Kang squat. Feet are gonna be shoulder width apart. I'm gonna go ahead and have a soft bend in my knees. I'm gonna send my hips back, chest forward, get a stretch through my hamstrings, and then drop the hips down into my squat. Help open up those hips, push those knees out, wiggle around a bit. Then hips come back up, and then chest come back up. From the side, feet shoulder width, hips go back, slight bend in the knees, hamstring stretch, drop the hips to my squat, wiggle around a few times, and then Hips back up, chest back up, all right? So that's two. We're gonna go for five. Down, down, up, up. Three. Down, down, up, up. That's four. Down, down, up, and up. That's five. Cool, the next movement that we're gonna go, go ahead and do is gonna be groiner rotation. So we're gonna do a pose that we have before in one of our mobility sessions called the groiner. Starting to lunge, hands to the inside of that hand, back leg comes off, and now <clears throat> the arm that is close to the leg that is in front is going to go ahead and rotate from the floor. If you can bring your elbow down to the instep, awesome. And then to the ceiling. We're going 10 per side. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. You go to the other side. And again, you might notice that one side is a little tighter -er than the other. And that's okay, but we just have to keep that in mind as we want to figure out what might be causing that tightness. Was it that I was on leaning on my left foot all day at work? Um, do I kick soccer balls with my left foot? And those things will play into your day-to-day -day movements. Right from those groiner rotations, we're gonna go ahead and go into 15 jumping jacks. Get the heart moving get the blood pumping, get those ankles ready to do some jump rope work today. All right, so 15, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, cool. We're gonna go for one more round. I'm gonna go a little quicker through this. I'm feeling warm, as you should be now too. We're gonna start with those kang squats. Two, right, so in the bottom of that kang squat, it should look like whatever your bottom position of your squat looks like. Some of us might be a little higher, some of us may be a little lower, but the feet should be flat, chest should be up, Back should be flat. Last one. Good. Another set of the rotations. If you need to, you can drop that back knee. And then pick it back up. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Switch. One, and exhale. Two, three, 
four. With that rotation, we're getting a little movement through the spine. This would be good to throw in maybe to your morning routine where you just woke up and got out of bed. We're all a little stiff when we get out. It's good to get some blood moving throughout that entire spine. And then lastly, 15 jumping jacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Cool. That's our warm up. You're more than welcome. If you're free, or if you're doing this first thing in the morning, you're more than welcome to do one more round, two more rounds until you feel that you are significantly warmer than when we started. Now we're gonna talk about what we have for the workout. And again, the equipment pieces that you'll need, jump rope and some weight that you're gonna use for today. Welcome back. I hope you have your equipment ready. If you don't have a jump rope, that's okay. We can do jumping jacks in our workout. We can also do some line hops. So if you have a line on the floor, if you're on hardwood, if you're on carpet, just create an imaginary line that you can hop back and forth up and on. You can also do a plate hop if you have some a weight plate available for you to use, which I'm going to be using today. If you can't jump, for whatever reason, ankle injury, uh, recently sprained, then you could just do fast steps if that is okay for your ankle, right? Secondly, if you have a weight plate, if you have a dumbbell, our movements that we will be using that weight for today is going to be, firstly, a ground to overhead. And it's exactly as it sounds. We take it from the ground to overhead in one swift movement. Right? There, we're combining the deadlift with a press overhead. So if I slow that down, that would be a flat back deadlift, a quick little bicep curl, and then a press overhead. All of those are meant to be in succession and quick. Now, third movement is gonna be a squat and a press, or what we call a thruster. Now, because my plate is a little awkward in shape, it will be a little bit of maneuvering to, uh, for me to do. Here I perform my squat, and as I come up, I finish and press overhead. And that is our thruster. Our workout for today is going to be a 12 minute EMOM. On the first minute, I'm going to do 45 seconds of jump rope. That can be single unders, that can be double unders where I jump and the rope passes under me twice. Second minute, I'm going to go for as many ground overheads as I can do in 45 seconds. And then the third minute, 45 seconds of as many thrusters as I can do. Now, you at home may be working at a different speed than I am, but as always, just work at your pace, take a breath when you need to, drink some water, come back and hit it with us. Now, without further ado, I'm gonna start the clock off. Again, I'm gonna start with jumping, uh, doing some jump rope. You can do the modifications that work for you. We're going in 10 seconds. Two, one, and here we go. Now if you are jumping rope, keep those feet together, light jump, little turn of the rope. If you keep tripping up on your rope, remember, we want to keep those hands low, because if you go high, then we're gonna go ahead and hit the shoes or the legs. Again, we're going for 45 seconds. A little movement of the arms, or the wrists rather and just a little bounding off those balls of those feet. We have about 10 more seconds before we rest and switch. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. All right, so 10 seconds out, we're gonna go to ground overhead with our plate. Oh, with my plate. Backpack, whatever you're gonna use. Three, two, one, go.
right? And even though we're trying to go for as many as we can do, we are not sacrificing safe, proper form. So my back is not roundy as I go down. And I'm finishing all the way overhead, not in front. We have 10 more seconds. Three, two, one, rest. Whew. 10 seconds. Then we have our thrusters. Five, four, three, two, one, and again. Just swap in, ground to shoulder. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, rest. Now, same thing if you can't go overhead on the thruster, you can go ahead and just do front squats for this minute. Three, two, one, and go. Again, work to your depth and your flexibility. So if you can only get this low, I want you to go for that low. But if you can go lower, go for it. Keep those feet flat and that back flat. Make sure that you're keeping the knees in line with the toes. Come down. Do not want the knees to be coming in or out. Just as bad. 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, rest. All right, we're halfway. Two more rounds. In three, two, one, and go. Ten 
you want to learn some boxing steps, you're well, welcome to. I don't do much of that, so this is just off of what I picked up over Rocky Builds. Right? We're halfway, about 15 seconds left. Notice my body positioning is upright. I'm not leaning over, I'm not looking at my feet. And rest. Back to the ground overheads in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Three, four, At the top, you should feel your glutes squeezed, you're pressing up overhead. What I don't want is a finish where we're leaned over. You can see my hips are open all the way. Finish through and press all the way actively overhead as opposed to in front. 10 seconds. Five. Three, two, one, rest. Well, we have thrusters. And for this set of thrusters, I want you to focus on your breathing. And maybe take a second up top to take a deep breath before you go for your next one. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale up, inhale down. Halfway. Same thing here. Don't want to finish out here. Want to finish completely overhead and locked out. Keep it up. Finish through, squeeze the glute to the top. Same finish position as those ground overheads. And rest. All right, we're going to our last round. I'm gonna switch my jump rope to try to do some double unders. And that's gonna require a little higher jump than I was doing earlier. Three, two, one, and go. then feel free to go fast, go truly as many reps as you can, but both ways, heavy, light and fast, should never break the form that you should be having. Flat back, overhead, flat back, overhead, flat back, quick, and overhead. Keep it up everyone, we have 10 more seconds before we rest. Go, 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 it's the last time we do these ground overheads. Three, two, one more. One, and rest. All right, take a quick breath. We're gonna go for our last set of thrusters. In five, four, three, two, one, and go. Feet flat, back flat, breathe, squat, and press. Ah. 
halfway. Fifteen. Five, three, two, one, rest. Oh, that one didn't count. All right, that's our 12 minute EMOM. Grab some water, take a cool down lap down the driveway, come back, we'll do a couple stretches to close it off. All right, everyone, I hope you got a little cool down in. We're gonna go ahead and close off with a couple of stretches. We did a bunch of jumping and bounding, which can tighten up the calf or the lower leg muscles. So we're gonna do a little bit of that. We did a quite a bit of squats, so we're gonna go ahead and open up those hips a little bit. The very first one we're gonna do is downward dog position with calf pumping from side to side, right? So here, we're doing this variation of calf mobility because we're still warm. The muscles we use, which we want to stretch, the most pliable right now because they're the warmest. So here, starting in a push-up position, I'm going to go ahead and pipe my hips up to the ceiling and push my head through the arms. My goal here is to drive one heel to the floor and then pump to the other side and then back to the other and then slowly try to make sure that some of us may be here, try to lock out that knee and really get that heel to the floor. Exhale, pump. Exhale, pump. Pump. What you can even do is stack and load that one side, really emphasize that one leg. Pump and hold. Switch. Good. Now, downward dog is a really good stretch for the shoulders, for the back of the leg. But if you're not able to feel it in the hamstrings, it could be that your calves are so tight that we're not able to feel that sensation just yet in the hamstrings. Now, we're gonna go into the hips and we're going to show two variations of this next mobility exercise. The first one is gonna be the pigeon stretch. Right, so here, I'm gonna start in a lunge, and I'm gonna go ahead, hands to the opposite sides, and I'm gonna go shimmy this leg across my body, try to flatten it out. In my back leg, I'm gonna go ahead and scooch down, and then here. I should feel that in my hip, maybe a little bit of the hamstrings, but what's important here is my hips are facing down straight to the floor. Or you can use your belly button as your guide should not be facing out to the side, should be facing towards the floor. Now, depending on how tight your hips may be, some of us may, can, may only be able to be here, and some of us may be able to sink a little lower and maybe even lay flat on the floor. Whatever your ability level is, goal is to be that front hip, a little bit of that front of the back leg. Now, if you can't comfortably get in that position, you're feeling some knee pain, which is what we don't want. You can do this modified bent 90-90 uh, position. And we're gonna go ahead and lay that belly button down and towards that front knee. Same sensation will be felt in the hip, just a little different. So belly button towards the knee, lay flat, reach across. And I can already feel that in my glutes right now. I could feel that in a little bit of the low back. Um, and that could be from the ground overheads that we did. Uh, it could be from the long hike I did yesterday. Uh, it could just be from daily life that is just really tight. Cool. Now, as we've discussed before, make sure that you are fully able to breathe in whatever stretch that you are in. What we don't want is you to force a stretch and really think, ah, oh, no pain, no gain. And really can't comfortably breathe or hold a conversation. The nerve endings in those muscles need to be taught that this is an okay position, this is not dangerous, and I can therefore relax. And we can only do that by our response. Okay, deep breathing, this is fine, nothing's wrong, no, no houses are on fire, right? If we tense up that 
go ahead, that travels down into the brain, subconsciously tells the nerve endings, this is not okay, I need to stay tight, I need to fight this. And that's defeating the purpose of why we are spending time in these positions, right? Last one is gonna be a butterfly stretch. This is gonna target the groin, the inner thighs. And the first step that I want you to do is get those feet together. Number two is get those feet as close to your hips as possible. Now you can see some, my knees are close to the floor. Some of yours might be up here, and that's a sign of significant tightness through the hips. Uh, the first thing I want you to do to initiate the stretch is try to actively drive the knees towards the floor. I've still got some space there. Number two, I'm gonna get a flat back. I'm not arched and hunched over here. And then number three, I'm gonna try to bring my belly button down towards my feet. And right there, I can feel stretch through my inner thigh, my groin area. And I'm just gonna sit here, take some deep breaths. And I'm still trying to push my knees down actively. And as you can see, I'm already uh, just five breaths in. I've already gotten closer to the floor. I've already gotten lower towards my heels. And that is not an exaggeration. I'm, I'm at a place in my stretch that is comfortable and challenging, but not overbearing that I can't breathe. Right? So all of these stretches that we did, you can extend these for as long as two, three minutes of time, but make sure that as you come out of those, you're allowing some blood to refresh back into those areas you're allowing that change to happen in those areas. All in all, that is the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed the workout. Have a wonderful rest of your day.